Hi everybody, I just wanted to take some time to go over a quick topic that uh, hasn't been covered earlier in the course that would have been covered with this chapter in chapter 11 on uh, form programming, user form programming, so developing dialog boxes and event driven programming. But uh, what I want to talk about is using uh, VBA as a way to prototype applications and as well using graphical elements to improve the look and feel of more developed uh, applications that you would de that you could possibly make outside and beyond simple spreadsheet applications that might have a couple of buttons on it. We do know of course that you can make a very interesting very useful application in Excel. Here we have the example of a mortgage loan application that doesn't require any VBA programming. It simply sells in Excel but you can see that they've been uh, spiced up a little bit by just simply change some formatting. This is a screenshot but it is directly out of Excel where you just change the cell backgrounds maybe make uh, some outlines around some of the cells and you can see this section that I have over here under linked cells it could really just be hidden so that the user doesn't see it. Uh, when considering developing an application you do want to often take a look at designing the uh, the way the program feels, or the, sorry, the way the program looks. So you're developing a graphical application and that can sometimes start with developing sketches on a piece of paper or a napkin there are actually uh, times when a designer will create a software mock-up in programs like Adobe Photoshop. So you can, of course, if it was a graphical program, you wouldn't be able to interact with those features at all. You would see how the program looks, but you wouldn't see how the program works. And there are actually uh, packages you can buy. You can purchase software that helps to design the look of the software, and there are packages that allow you to build a prototype, uh, or also called a mock-up. So we got one example here where uh, I have the graphical elements that go into making an iPhone uh, and an iPhone application. So we have the, a little picture of the iPhone and what we can do is this is a, a actually a very large Photoshop file with multiple layers. So you could actually move these elements onto the screen itself so you can show the customer what the uh, application will look like. And that's one way to go about doing that particular work. Now one technique that is, uh, or one used to VBA and programs like uh, VBA or Visual Basic is it's very, easily to, very easy to develop a program that works even a little bit or uh, even just a mock-up that doesn't really do much of anything but the user can play with it, see message boxes, see if it fits the right size, if the screens are the right size, is the text the right size, can they easily read it and does it fit the kind of things that they would want to do. So uh, this goes into an area of research called usability testing and it talks a little, we could talk a little bit about the user experience where you get a feeling for how the user can interact with your program and you know you get actual feedback from the customer yes they like this, no they don't do this or they don't like this particular aspect so you can change it in the prototype before actually spending a lot of time and resources in actually developing uh, the product. I have been in the situation where a colleague of mine at uh, a company I was working for was actually d had developed a, a method in VB to pull information from uh, the uh, external network that they were using and write it into the database and he had written that up just as a short uh, stopgap measure in order to get a specific job done in a short, short, short time period but it turns out they ended up using it as one of their key products for a number of years until they developed it in a much larger application. So rapid prototyping is one of the benefits of using VBA simply because you can, it's very easy to write VBA code. Basic is a, a simple language to learn and it is nice that we have this graphical interface uh, readily available. So if you've got Word or Excel you can always jump into the VBE and create a user form to show some other people what the program might look like. So with uh, prototyping you might have little sketchbooks or little sketch designs that somebody puts together. They say you know I want a new scientific calculator that kinda looks like this or like the normal Windows calculator but I also need these different features installed. Can you build something like that? So you might uh, see that kind of a situation occur. So I talked a little bit about the user experience and this is a, an area that's getting a lot more um, a lot more attention these days and, and I like to think about it as the, in the intersection of, of these different areas. We have the craftsmanship of putting together a well-designed piece of 
um, usable software. We have the science and the technology used in the programming of it, but we also want to make uh, it easy to use, make the users happy, not angry when they have to sit down and use your particular program. So one of the things I like doing is adding some uh, colorful graphics to my spreadsheets or the applications. And you've seen some of these before. One of the things that you can do is just search the web for free icons. So the ones that you see on this screen are actually from a specific icon set called the Webly icon set. And you can see that they're nice and they're big and they're colorful. And uh, they, there's a lot of features found in some of these sets. You have some social networking icons, and you have some application icons, There's a, you don't see it here, but there's the Firefox icon and all those sorts of things. And you can just use these in your applications to do certain things. Now some icon sets are focused more on different types of programs and some are web-based programs uh, or web-based applications. But this is just one out of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of free icon sets that you can find on the web. Now when using icons, there are some uses that are, are typical in Windows programming. Normally, uh, the old style of Windows programs before Office 2007 came out with the ribbons, you probably remember seeing toolbars on the top of the screen that had very small squares. Those icons for those buttons are usually 16 pixels by 16 pixels. But uh, what are known as XP style buttons, when the graphics became a little more dynamic and you get different shading and that kind of thing, you can have sizes ranging from 16 by 16 squares all the way up to 256 by 256. And you can see in this image, I really am just displaying a 16 by 16 pixel image and a 32 by 32 image. Uh, I actually don't know why the 32 GIF, uh, 32 by 32 pixel GIF looks smaller than a 32 by 32 pixel icon. So there are different image formats that you can use on a button. So these are actually buttons on a user form and you can change the picture property. So once you add a picture to the form, there's a couple of things you can do with it. Or uh, the uh, picture a property of the button. You can't use the PNG format and a lot of graphics you'll download now from the web are in PNG format so you might have to convert them. You usually use BMP, GIF or ICO formats. So if they're provided in different folders, look for the ones that might work. JPEGs, also not as common to be used in a button. This is for different reasons. Uh, when you are using these kind of buttons, you can see that I've got a normal button here that actually has a caption under it, and these others are just labels. So you typically have, sometimes you have small buttons with no text associated with it. You can actually set a tooltip. So uh, I didn't mention this in the slide, but when you put your mouse over the button, it'll just show you a tooltip of what the button is actually supposed to do. So you don't have to have words written there, but visually, after you use the program long enough, you know what all the icons mean. If you look at Google Documents, for example, which I'm using right now, the icons themselves don't have words on them, they're just pictures. But when I mouse over them, they show a tooltip. So actually there, you might be able to see the tooltip pop up, but you can't see the icon because it's off screen. So if you do have a button on your form and you place a picture on it, there's a couple like properties that you can set. Set the auto size property to true, that way the button expands to the right size of the image and you don't have to drag it and scale it. Uh, there are actually, a, there's a picture mode uh, property as well, because you can actually have uh, the button a specific size and then scale or stretch the image down, uh, which could sometimes lead to distortion. Uh, so look for one of those properties in the picture section. But typically what I've done is I clear the caption property. So for the two buttons here where there's the uh, world and the little magnifying glass that's already been selected, they don't have a caption. So I just remove the caption property. And then you set the picture property. Oh, there's some stuff missing here. The picture property to the, uh, set the picture property to the uh, I guess the image that you want. So you browse to that image. And then you'll also want to set the, I'm sorry, you'll actually want to set the picture position property to be a little bit different if you remove the caption. So I've got this example here. Hopefully you can see all this. I've just removed the uh, properties drop down list. I've just moved it back into the middle of the screen here so you can see it where my button is. So I just added that bitmap. I uh, went to a whole bunch of different uh, images that I had already downloaded a while ago and I just chose a 32 bit image. Auto size true. So you can see that the image got shorter. If I delete the caption, the it, caption gets shorter and removes the caption. So now the button is still getting smaller based on the size of the image. 
the auto because auto size is still true you can actually change the background color and, and that kind of stuff but for now it is a gray button uh, but you'll see there's that space under the image so what you do there instead of picture position number seven which is above center we actually drag this down to center so i center the image it resizes the button for me automatically there is a tag option so that i can type in a message that would explain what the button does and that way when I'm actually executing the form which may or not work in this uh, situation, here's a little form here, I mouse over it oh that's not the tag icon it was actually uh, not the tag, it is called the control tip text I'll just change this to something different, begin adventuring there, so now if I execute the form then when I move over the mouse I get a tooltip pops up and of course it does nothing because I haven't assigned any code to it so that's how to manipulate some of the properties of the button itself so we've said uh, set the picture property and set the picture position property and that makes things look pretty nice for you there so that's uh, standard icons now the last thing that I will just briefly touch on is the use of UI kits. So user interface kits, we saw the example earlier that contained all of the images for let's say an iPhone, but you can have ones that are formatted for Android phones or iPads or the playbook development. They are usually in the PSD format so you do need to have a bit of a background in Photoshop or even just opening up and screen, take screen captures and then customizing them yourself using paint will actually work out pretty well. So you can see there, I've got this one application here, which is actually uh, roughly equivalent to the size of a, it's, well, this pixel size of a playbook. And then on the background here, this is actually just another UI uh, set that you can download, kind of looks like Tron and things kind of glow. Uh, you'll find that uh, development these days is actually just this, you'll see that the user interfaces are just a collection of images. Anyway, so I'll go back to this form that I have put together. Uh, you probably can't see the whole thing. Uh, so I will move it around so that you can there here we go you'll have this file available for download for some of you I have a, a basic form that I developed in um, in VBA so here you go I've got this program that I want to build this is essentially what it's going to look like maybe I'll develop it in Visual C++ maybe it'll be Visual Basic but I've just put it together this prototype in VBA so I can look at pictures and you know that actually does something it didn't a second ago so I click on I click pictures and I get a picture loaded and you notice I just have buttons that don't do anything so I've added a little graphical button for that settings so that's nice but not very engaging it's gray you know I made it more interesting with this little button here but that's really not the point so we move on to the next step well I want a much more dynamic kind of application to look at so I can do something like this so here I've just got a simple form where the background is an image that came from a, a UI set that I downloaded for free off the web. You do have to check the licensing on these kind of things to make sure they're available for uh, non-commercial uh, or non-commercial use, whatever you're going to be using it for. So I've got a couple of things here. I can click on the button and you'll see that these are actually graphics and they're not actual buttons. But I did uh, make a couple of things happen here so I can select a file somewhere I can select a file and then when I come back to the screen it would do something different and then I've done this so I click and I could choose one of those that's actually another image so I'll, I'll show you the little technique that I use here here's Sal will be provided for you if you're taking CP212 and you'll know how to get to access to that file and uh, otherwise the rest of this section of uh, the rest of these slides are just uh, an example of what assignment 4 could have looked like so thank you very much for your time and I hope you had a great semester Thank <laughs> you.